Welcome back to Cast 529, everyone. I'm Brian. And I'm Shauna. Tonight we've got a little cigar blend competition. Not competition, but comparison put together. We do. So tell us what we've got tonight, Shauna. We have two cigar cast cigar blends um, to compare. We have the Joseph Magnus and the High Bank Distillery one from Columbus, Ohio. That's exciting. It we, is. we looked, or I looked at least for a long time for this one. Um, we have had the Magnus before. We have, in fact, we're killing the bottle tonight. Tonight's the end of the road for it. And Brian said, those are really heavy pours tonight. And I said, well, there is a reason for it. It's like, you know, when you go to the fridge and there, someone just leaves that little bit of milk or that and little bit of iced tea in the pitcher. And one of and, the kids has put the pitcher away and there's- And you're like, really? Yeah. Well, I didn't want to do that. So that's why we have a little bit heavier pours tonight. Plus, it doesn't hurt to have a little heavier pour. Plus, I guess there's only two pours, so. Yeah. So, to be a cigar blend, cigar casket, you know, really just need to be a, a finished um, whiskey that will go good when you're smoking a cigar. Now, I have not ever, and nor do I plan on smoking a cigar. Brian hasn't smoked one for a very long time. <laughs> so, we will not be enjoying these with cigars. However, I will tell you, that I do enjoy the uh, finished whiskey. The, these are both good finished whiskeys. They are, yes. Now, I would say they're both really hard to get. <laughs> um, I, I would say that you could get your hands on the Joseph Magnus a lot easier than the High Bank. Yeah, oddly enough, I, I'd say that's correct. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> now, the Joseph Magnus, it is, um, this one is batch 194 and it comes in um, at one, well, just over 113 proof. Um, and it is finished in the Armagnac, and I probably butchered the heck out of that, guys, sherry and um, cognac cask. <clears throat> Where the high bank is only finished in Amberana barrels, and it is 116.5 proof. So, do you want to tell a little story about the Joseph Magnus, or do you want to start tasting it and you can tell it why we're... That's, well, I'm not sure which part of the story you'd like me to tell, so let's start tasting it. And, <laughs> and maybe uh, it'll come back to me. Yep. So, these, this is not a blind for us tonight. We're just reviewing these together because they're finished completely differently. Um, but we just want to talk about them. I know the Joseph Magnus comes in at $199.99, unless it's changed since we bought this bottle. Yeah, this bottle was actually purchased um, late last summer, early fall probably. Um, just a little bit about the Magnus line is, uh, and Shauna will probably correct me as I go here, that's, that's what good wives do, right guys? Um, Magnus actually went out of business around Prohibition, is that correct time frame? Um, I believe so, yes. And then uh, years later, um, a bottle of, of Magnus was discovered by a grandson or great-grandson. Um, they actually got it. They were able to have it tested, have a sample drawn out of the bottle. My understanding is actually with a needle through the cork, they were able to draw a sample out so that they didn't allow air into it. Um, were able to determine what was in that bourbon at the time and recreate it. Um, that was not the cigar blend uh, no. that that happened with. I believe that was the straight bourbon. Um, it's either straight bourbon or the Murray Hill Murray, Club. Murray, oh, yeah. Not sure which one. Um, so it, we did do a, a video on that, and I can link it at the end, so that if you guys want to go go back to watching and, that. And I will tell you that at that time, now this has been opened, obviously, for a long time, um, and we're finishing it tonight. When we reviewed the Magnus line, the cigar blend was our. Sean and I's least favorite of the three bottles. Um, 
not saying that we didn't like all three bottles because we did. Yeah, it wasn't. We just that, put them in order. Yeah, it wasn't that we didn't like it. Um, and at that time, um, Magnus Master Distiller, uh, Nancy Fraley, actually reached out in our comments. Um, I thought I was really in trouble at first when I saw her name pop up. But um, she basically was just telling me that this particular batch came from sort of a transitional period. And that if we would go and get a newer bottle, we would probably have a much different opinion of it. And I won't disagree with that. However, at a couple hundred dollars for the bottle, we weren't interested at that point in going out and getting a maybe. Yeah. But you now know. that this one's gone, the next time we yeah. see it, the new one, we probably will pick it up. Maybe, it may be time now to replace one. But yep. that's kind of a background brief on Magnus and what we thought of it. Right. So let's see what it uh, what it's like tonight. So on the nose, I'm getting um, some citrus notes. Also like a, a slight tobacco note. And I know, you know, maybe that's in my head because of what we're tasting, <laughs> but I am getting it. Um, a lot of sweet notes, kind of a fruitier, along with the citrus, more of a fruit note. That's that's what I'm getting. I, you know what, I wouldn't, if you guys have watched the show at all, you know my, my nose is not good. Um, I would not pick that scent out as citrus, but now that you tell me it's citrus, I can really relate that to like if I bite into a piece of orange or something and you know sometimes it'll squirt. Mm -hmm. I, I, I get that. Yep. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't pick that out and say, oh yeah, that's citrus, but as it enters your palate definitely get the I can um, get that port um, finish yeah, on it. There's port there. It's a very good bold um, flavor. I see it's, like a cinnamon spice. I'm not picking up the cinnamon. Maybe on my next one I might get that but I didn't pick that up. Some brown sugar you getting that? Get, I am getting the brown sugar but definitely I'm getting that wine and um, that heavy Port. The longer it sits yeah. on my palate, the more port I actually get out of mm -hmm. it. I'm getting some nice oak um, flavors. Just a little bit of char, like not, and you know what, it may not be the char, maybe it's more turning into the baking spices now in the finish. It's, it has a long finish. In fact, it's still on my palate. It has a really nice finish. A nice sweet, like a, yeah, it's, it's really kind of a sweet, tangy, spicy finish it's a delightful finish it really is what you say it was 10 um i think it was one right here it's really hard because it's like golden brown it's like um just over 113 proof so it's oh 56.96 percent so almost 114 actually mm -hmm. It, it actually, um, it, it's got a really nice, it's got a really nice point to it, but I wouldn't say it really drinks at a 114. No, it's nice. It's smooth. Yeah. Does it have um, much of a Kentucky hug? Of course, it's not from Kentucky, so it shouldn't have that Kentucky hug, right? No. <laughs> Those two are really, um, really close in proof points. Yeah, they are. <clears throat> and that's why, again, I thought they, you know, not only cigar blends or cask, um, but also same proof points they should be a good comparison yeah however they are finished differently so i am picking up that little bit of cinnamon that you mentioned it's it's really good and you know that's that's what's so hard about when we reviewed all three of the joseph magnus ones is because we did put this last but if you're you're drinking this all by itself it is really, really good. It's, it it's, is. It's really pleasant tonight. It's the first thing we've had all day. Yeah, but that says something about their other two bottles. It does. Because it this does. one came in last, but yet it is so good. Yep. So. Yeah, it's, I think had we reviewed it by itself. And we did. Obviously, it, you know, but not. 
we did before when we first bought it we um, did a single review it's out there and then we bought the whole line and reviewed them okay. so it is out there um, and I know when we reviewed it we said how good it was but just just so you know all of theirs are good so yeah they it's, are it's a nice Now this. Speaking, I'm oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. Speaking of an entire line that we find so good is right in our backyard, and it's the High Bank Distillery. We have not found one there yet we really that we haven't. don't enjoy. They no. have phenomenal, phenomenal whiskeys there. Um, it's in this cigar blend. Um, I think we were first made aware of the cigar blend. What maybe two months ago. Uh, and they had a limited release later that week. It was uh, distillery only. Um, there was, we just couldn't get there to get it. A couple weeks ago, a few weeks ago, Shauna uh, texted me one morning and said, hey, they're releasing it again. So I did some research. This was a Monday. Later that week, it was going to be at some OHLQ locations. Um, those were not released at that point. You were just going to have to keep watching the website. So I looked. It actually showed in stock at the distillery. So uh, I was able to be at the distillery just before they opened. And they did not have it, nor were they going to have it. Later that day, they had it. <laughs> but uh, I wasn't driving back to Columbus in hopes that it would still be there. So, uh, last week, yep. I got looking on the OHLQ website. It was showing at the Giant Eagle in Columbus two days in a row. So, the second day I drove up, nothing there. So, I'm in Columbus. There's a lot of places in Columbus to look. So, I get on the website. I find another Giant Eagle about 20 minutes away. I go there, nothing back on the website I find a Kroger about another 20 minutes away I go there they actually had like five or six of them sitting on the shelf so um, I got it couldn't wait for Shauna to get home from work she finally did Fine. <laughs> and uh, we gave it a shot yeah yep and we did enjoy it and, it, and um, it was really good now so it's been open for several days yep so when I have a whiskey finished in the Amparano um, barrels, I always get like that apple cinnamon pie type note. Um, on this one, I am picking up that um, sweet cinnamon note on the nose. I'm not picking up a lot of the apple. Um, however, it's very sweet. It's, it's not as, the apple is not as pronounced on the nose as some uh, that I sometimes get, but definitely the cinnamon is. It's very, it's a, it's, I love, love whiskeys finished like this. And so I know a lot of people disagree with that. I'm not, I'm not saying this Magnus wasn't good because we enjoyed it tonight. But wow. Definitely the cinnamon all the way through for me. Rich, bold flavors. It's creamy. It's thick and creamy. Mm -hmm. It is very. Um, it's kind of finishing with that chewing gum, the bubble gum note for me, which I enjoy. It's a nice, sweet note. Um, but definitely. Again, not really getting the apple pie taste, but definitely the sweet cinnamon notes. You didn't get the it's, apple pie on that one? No, I got the cinnamon, um, but I didn't get the, not the pronounced apple pie filling type. Um, but no, it's, it's not like that already one that we had, yeah. but, I, but I definitely get a little bit of it there. It's fruity. It has like, the, like I said, the bubble gum flavor note at the end. Kind of reminds me like of the Jack Daniels type finish, the um, the rise, that same similar note that I get. So this one, just to recap, it comes in at 116.5 proof. Uh, the Magnus came in at just under 114. That taste, um, getting a little bit of leather with it. 
a little bit drier um, note with it, more of a leather then turns into a dark chocolate um, cocoa type note. Still the cinnamon and the fruitiness, the sweetness comes through. On that, that one I didn't get that bubblegum note on the end, on the finish I got more of that sweet cinnamon note. Um, not a pronounced apple pie filling note that I, I but it's just a sweet, nice cinnamon note on the end this time. Um, off, off topic for just a second, um, before I forget, if you guys could hit the like button, we'd appreciate that. If you haven't subscribed already, hit that subscribe button. And um, to go along with that, Friday night, if anyone missed it, we had our live show, mm -hmm. uh, 1,000 subscriber celebration, gave away lots of stuff. Thanks to everyone that tuned into that. Thanks to everyone that has helped us get to where we're at right now. Yes. Also with that, we want to take a second to thank our new patron, Rick Moreland. Thank you very much for, for joining our patron membership. Thank you, um, Rick. Anybody else that would like to become a member, um, please go out. There's a link in the description and check out all the offerings that you get with that. Um, we'd love to have you join our, our family. Absolutely. And that those offerings will, will grow as we grow mm -hmm. so um, we've got some exciting ideas we we really do but we just we got to get our community yeah. built and, yeah we just can't um, do everything that we want to do <laughs> based on where we're at so. yeah <laughs> um i'm going to taste these real quick again just so i can kind of put them in an, an order however i will tell you regardless which one if i even put them in a, like Whichever one I choose first over the second, these are both really good. And if you have a chance to get your hands on them, I definitely would. I mean, this one at $200, it may be a little bit harder to shell out $200 for it, but it is a good pour um, if, if you do and you want it. This one at $99, definitely a good buy. Um, still a little bit pricey, however, a great great pour you're going to get all the flavors and stuff that you expect for spending that type of money and and i want i definitely want to take nancy's word for the fact that a different batch is going to be better we just got to be willing to part with that 200 dollars in hopes that it is um <laughs> when she says it's better i mean it's, this is still good so yeah yeah absolutely no no it's so if it's even better wow I don't think that we ever said it's bad. It just did not do as well as their other two bottles to us when all three of them were compared back to back. Um, however, tonight, I don't know if we had had this since then, honestly. No, it's been a while. Um, we'd, we'd given some guests a pour of it here and there. Um, it's really good. It was really good when it was the first thing on our palate. Mm -hmm. And it's still good. I really like that high bank though. I don't know how you put those in order really. Honestly, I am tonight I am gonna to put the high bank distillery whiskey war cigar cask first. And the only reason it is coming in first is because of the price point for me. It's $100, um, where this is $200, so it's half the price. It's full of flavor. They're both full of flavor, but it's it has bolder flavors for me. And I, I, I really enjoy it. Um, and it's, a, it's Ohio, so I mean, supporting our own. This one, I mean, if I was scoring these, they would probably both be in the 80s. They would be up there. Um, and they would probably only be like a point or two difference. And if it was, a, if I did pricing, it, you know, this one probably would lose a couple points because I feel this one has a lot of boldness and great flavors and it's half the price. And so I would have to put this one first just because of really the pricing. I to kind of expand on that, the flavors in the high bank, I feel, explode more. Mm -hmm. They're more pronounced. You can pick those flavors out. Um, where in the Magnus, they all kind of blend together. 
<laughs> they're there and you can sense them, but you really have to dig for them. And at times that's a good thing. But when you compare that to something that you don't have to look for them, yeah. back to back, it's hard to not go with that. It is. And then you look at the value, as you mentioned, a $100 bottle versus a $200 bottle. This is probably easier to find than this. Yeah, <laughs> most definitely. Uh, you know, there's, there's positives and negatives, pros and cons both ways. I think I have to pick the high bank as well. Uh, we just, we like the line. Um, probably everybody doesn't. We do. Yeah, we, we love their line. We love the Joseph Magnus line too. We do. To be fair, we love both lines. Um, however, you know, support Ohio. Mm -hmm. And um, tonight I'm, I'm picking the high bank. I'm with you. I'm with you. I've got to go with the high bank. So <clears throat> that is our review of Joseph Magnus Cigar Blend versus High Bank Distillery Cigar Blend. Yep. Um, if you guys out there, probably a lot more of you have had this or had a chance to have this than you have the high bank, but let us know in the comments if you've had either of them, what you thought of them. This is fairly new, the high bank. Um, there are some reviews out there on it I've seen, mm -hmm. so let us know what you think. And I think that is probably all we have for this evening. That's all we have. Um, thanks for joining us. We hope you enjoyed this comparison. Uh, check back with us in a few days for another episode of What's in the Glen Wednesday. Shauna's favorite episode of the week. It really is. <laughs> and until next time, everyone, be safe. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>